Hi, my name is Monica Goyle. I am a pediatric emergency medicine physician at Children's National Medical Center, and my research interest is improving adolescent care within the emergency department. The purpose of the study really was to look at how often we're testing for pregnancy among adolescent females that um, utilize the emergency department. And what we found was that less than 20% of adolescent girls are actually tested for pregnancy when they come to the emergency department. Um, but what was really actually even more striking was that even girls that are coming in with potential pregnancy-related symptoms um, are infrequently tested for pregnancy. So we found that only about 40% of those girls that were coming in with symptoms that could be related to a pregnancy um, were tested for pregnancy. And then um, among, um, you know, when we're working in the emergency department, some of the, um, the testing that we provide um, may be harmful to a growing fetus. And so um, the other thing that we looked at was um, how often we're testing for pregnancy when um, when adolescent female patients are um, being exposed to potentially teratogenic radiation. This study was derived from a nationally representative, representative database of um, hospital emergency departments. Um, we looked at over 22,000 um, hospital visits, which represented over 77 million hospital visits all over the country. Um, so these findings really underscore uh, the importance of, um, of developing quality uh, improvement interventions within the emergency department to uh, increase pregnancy testing among adolescent females, especially those girls that are presenting with symptoms that may be related to pregnancy or, um, or those that are being um, exposed um, to diagnostic testing or treatment um, that may be harmful to a growing fetus. So, you know, sometimes um, adolescents may not be comfortable talking about certain things um, in front, um, you know, with their parents in the room. And, and for that reason, it's really important that providers be given time to speak with adolescent patients confidentially. And really, the goal for, you know, the goal in that is really to improve the care of the patient. It is not in any way to undermine the relationship of the parent and the adolescent.